Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we've got our co-host Hal in the building tonight. How's it going tonight, Hal? Going good. All right, so it is time for the last drip. We're going to recap any trades we took on the day, take a look at some of the top gainers, and check on the swing trade list. Now let's not waste any time and dive into the SPY, which ate it again today. Had a nice little rebound in pre-market and then just dumped the rest of the day. And it's still above the 50. As long as it's 50 holds, we'll probably see it rebound back up again. And that's what I'm thinking. How? What about you? Yeah, uh, that's what I was uh, looking at on the daily chart. It's tried so many times to get down. Four days of trying to get down with increased volume. You see the volume bar is rising down there. Mm -hmm. And just that volume, they're, they're not able to keep it up. So I'm, I'm expecting a bounce, a recovery. There's a billion dollar imbalance to the sell side on close. So if we don't rebound tomorrow and we see another billion leave the market like that, I think that drop is coming. But. I traded a stock called um, DATS. Oh, yeah, DATS. I saw this today. This was when I was playing a while back. I think you played it too, some. Yeah, when it yeah, initially it just, started ripping. Yeah, it just it had a big rip out of the open and then just could not go anywhere else after that open. I got in on the, uh, the first dip. And it, it, I got the little run up through the top, but it just threw a wick up there yeah. and then came back down. And I got out right before, oh. each time that I got out, it was right before the big dump. Yeah, that was a nice, so, nasty little wick down there. And then you, what, did you get back in right here again? Yeah, I got in on that second dip as well. I was like, hey, this thing can go again. This is a, another retry of this uh, level, so I'm sure that it'll it'll uh, go ahead and break it but huh, yeah it, it didn't do that yeah so you was red on this play yeah i lost uh the first one i lost 20 cents on uh i i calculated the actual drop i would have lost about possibly about 70 to 80 cents on those 75 shares which would have made it a, a lot bigger red day yeah uh but I, I cut them at a with 75, 75 shares, you know, 20 cents is way, I mean, 10 cents is a lot. And then 20 cents, you know how cheap I am. You know, <laughs> I got to buy cereal. Yeah. So uh, I cut them, cut them around that 20 cent area. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, this is the type of market we're in. You got to have those st uh, stop losses tight like that. And you're going to get wicked out. I, the last month, I don't know how many plays I've gotten wicked out of. After putting a stop loss in, I'd rather get wicked out and then reassess for entry than yeah. than be holding through a wick. Yeah, no, you're right. So I mean, they, they've saved me a couple of times. Sometimes they don't, and it makes me mad. <laughs> but you know how it is. So yeah, this one I thought was going to start running after the, at the beginning, but you can just see on the daily where it's got a lot of resistance at eight. Just bounced off that trend line and then getting hung up at eight. So, if the market doesn't completely bottom out here soon, uh, this could continue to slowly climb. I'd say we'll get another pullback tomorrow, though, down to the downtrend. The only other one that I traded was uh, one called Blue. Well, you saw Steve's video and you was like, "Man, I gotta, I gotta do one stock trade for Steve and trade some Blue." I mean, it was up on the scanner. It had a big run up as well. But just like um, the other one, uh, it got up there and just kind of flat topped. Mm -hmm. And I, I sized down on this one because because of the losses on uh, debts. I was like, you know what? This one looks too much like that. I'm gonna size down. So I only took one trade. Uh, yeah, right where your right where your pointer is right now, uh, in that little dip, that little two bar dip down. And then I got in, I was like, all right, I'm just going to wait. If it breaks VWAP, I'll be out. So I just followed VWAP up and for all of these bars until it cracked VWAP uh, down there on that red um, where it breaks VWAP right there. Yeah. So yeah. I got stopped right there. Yeah, man. It just couldn't get over that. Same thing. Yep. Like you, That's why you I sized down. I was already aggravated. And, and when I get <laughs> aggravated, I size down. 
And that's a good idea because, like, you got in right there around 6, and it only bounced to 620. Yeah. And I was looking, I was looking for that 2 to 1, you know, and I didn't get it. So I was like, I'll just wait till it breaks VWAP. So I stopped out around 20 cents on those 25 shares as well, which isn't bad. Yeah, so a little red day for you then just all around. Mm -hmm. And that was the only two trades you took? Yep. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I posted the short yesterday saying that they were going to uplist BTCS, and they did uplist today. And I got in there while it was moving flat because there just wasn't anything happening. So I was like, well, if nothing, if nobody's selling it, somebody's going to start buying it. So I jumped in there. <laughs> Well, I know this company really well, you know, so I've done a lot of research on this company. I've interviewed the CEO. We're looking to have the CEO back on the channel again now that they've uplisted once he gets a little less busy. But I knew that this was going to probably get a good pop because the reverse stock split put it to 5 million shares. And they've got a lot of retail shareholders. Well, not a lot, but they have a decent amount to where this is probably around like 4 million in float or something like that. So I knew it was super low flow and it's a crypto company. So I just got in there. I was like, if it drops, it drops. I'll, I'll hold and see. But I just did not think it was going to drop. And it made a nice run right up to 11. And not on a lot of volume. We got about a million right through there. And it was able to rip $3. I tried to hold it through this consolidation. It looked like a channel was maybe about to start to form. And then it just kind of dumped there like everything else did when the market really dumped. So I got out at the crack of that $10 support. The spread on this was insane. It was so hard to read what this was going to do off the level 2 in the time and sales. Because there was literally bids getting filled under the bid and ask getting filled over the ask and just all in between. Like, it was insane to watch. Can you go to the uh, two minute? Go to a little bit lower time frame so we can see what was happening in those bars. Yeah, you were brave. You were brave to hold that. You know, I, I, I would have got stopped on that first read. <laughs> well, no, that one right there, I just only went one share because I was making sure that the uh, stock was active. I didn't want to make a whole order or anything, and once I realized it was active, I gave it a little time to make sure it wasn't going to have a dump, because uh, this was OTC stock, and sometimes that'll happen, but when it held up, I started jumping in there, right in that area, right there, at 8, but like I said, at this point, the spread was crazy. See, right now in after hours, it's $8 on the bid and eight fifty on the ask. That's how it was through here and then when it started moving through here it was just crazy and then when that buying volume came in it just started pumping up there i thought it was going to hit other people's scanners on this pump and you know this wouldn't have been a familiar ticker to a lot of day traders in our area because it was an otc stock so i was expecting it to hit scanners but it never did hit any scanners here's the top 10 percent nasdaq gainer and it wasn't on there yeah, well, um, I, I looked at the data for it, and the data hasn't been updated yet. So, mm. you know, people with floats, uh, you know, the float scanners and uh, the share scanner, they, I mean, they wouldn't have seen this one. Yeah, that could be true. So I'm still watching it, even though it, this is a good day for it. It did not drop below the open, the open on the NASDAQ and had a push up and just held so i'm gonna be watching it again tomorrow probably i'll probably keep an eye on this one very closely because that float like i said it's crazy and if crypto start running again people will start getting aware that this is a new crypto company and when they find out what they have in their digital treasury uh, yeah they're gonna want some of this but yeah i end up with a little 45 dollar win on that one i saw azrx pop up and get halted oh, yeah, here. I saw that. I was so tempted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you <were> tempted. <laughs> well, I was oh, tempted man. too and it got me. Uh, but yeah, I saw it get halted there and I waited. This was a long halt though. This ended up being a 10 minute halt and that's not normal for a, a first halt of the day. So that kind of made me a little nervous, but then it gapped up, up to about that 540 and then ran the six. And then as it was coming down on this wick, I was like, ah, that's, you know, about halfway down that rip. So I got in on this in this candle for the VWAP to hold at 544, which is right above 
the VWAP, and then as soon as it started cracking the VWAP, I had to get out there, so, you know, I took a little $17 loss there, and then I traded in in VC, and it was on a nice uptrend, and actually did have some good news. They had a licensing deal. So yeah, I, this one tempted me as well. Did it? So I got mm -hmm. in I got in at the break of five for 50 shares, and it, it did run up there to 528, but I was just looking for that test of pre-market, at least like the five. 39 or something and just didn't even get to, didn't even get over 530 and when it came back down i was looking for it to still hold the trend line but you can see indecision there followed by that red bearish candle so i had to get out so that was a what about a that 18 dollar loss so i was about 20 yeah. in the green on the day i was i was actually waiting for it to blow through the pre-market before i even looked for entries because uh, had already showed that it can give back profits pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, even in aftermarket. So it spiked up, came down. Spiked up again, came down. Spiked up. And I was like, ooh, this thing needs to actually break pre-market before I even look for an entry. And it, it just started showing this weakness. Even yeah. on the uh, level twos and everything, the sizes started going down. I started, went from like 2,000 to like 50. <laughs> now, JCS... This was such good PR, and I knew at some point it was going to have to run. I didn't have any funds left to trade it, but they came out with the they were going to do a special dividend of $3.50, and the stock was at $8. So that's like a 45% dividend yield. That is not, wasn't going to stay at this price for long, but it showed a lot of weakness there. And I just kind of stopped watching it when it, I think right around here when it started cracking the 200, I was like, oh yeah, it's done for now to be a little while. But not too long after that, a little bit after I got done with the stream, actually, started ripping up again, still ripping into after hours. Hey, it's getting held up at 10, strong resistance at 10. If we see it gap above 10 in the morning, then we, I think we could see it continue to run. That's one I think to keep on watch because of that dividend. Because still, even at ten dollars, three fifty is a thirty-five percent dividend yield. It's unheard of in stocks. Uh, F sell did make a nice rip today. This one's float is so high. That's why I just never really trade it. And it always makes moves like this, which scare me. <laughs> like this is like it's just too many little green candles in a row, man. It, it never, whenever it rips, it doesn't have big rips. It has these little. Just slow buys up. But it did make a very nice move from 571 to 754. OPEC coming out and saying that the oil industry is going to get a lot more spicy because it's oil is going to get expensive. Uh-oh. So, yeah, if you got a gas car, you better start getting an electric car soon. You're going to be paying. Man, I'm saving up coupons. Yeah, save up coupons, all that, because with inflation on top of... The, sh the oil issues with OPEC and all that, yeah, it's going to get ugly. Vino, this one is back on watch for me. This is that wine stock I was talking about a while back. I'm going to be doing a video review on this soon. This is the company from Argentina that is not just wine. They also have real estate, and they just added some more real estate. They just acquired... 2.4 million dollars worth of real estate in Argentina. Now, if you don't know much about the wine sector, my wife works in that sector. She said the grapes in California, all the wines coming out of there because of the fires are smoky and they don't have the right taste anymore. So people are looking other places and it just so happens Argentina has some of the best area to grow wine grapes. And vino it's even named, the ticker symbol Vino is named after a wine. And it's also kind of like a REIT. So I, looked, I like this play a lot. It's very low float too, but having a nice rip up today from 3 to 4.55, still below the 200 day. But last time it started getting action, you know, we saw it all the way up to $10 just about. I think it's a company to keep an eye on. Even if the U.S. stock market crashes this is exposure outside of the U.S. It's an Argentinian company. So if the market crashes and Argentina's market keeps going up because they have good grapes and all types of other resources, then this could go up as well. There's the close on the market here. You can see 
just red all over the place. Only Microsoft and what's that? We have way more. Like every time when we do the last rips, we've had so many days where the market is just looking like a bloody, murky, <laughs> messy pool of death. Yeah. We rarely see where it's just green. Like it's like a couple of days, maybe one or two days out of the week, and then everything else is bloody Mary. Yeah, that's and that's why I, I think there's some validity to my theory that the institutions have been slowly getting out while the feds are holding the market up by pumping those billions in every month because it's just consistent selling. Maybe they're tapering, like I said, last dip. I said maybe they started tapering and not telling us, and that's why you're seeing the sell-off. If they're doing what I think they're doing, then it would make perfect sense for them to start tapering early and not tell anybody so all the institutions and politicians and all them can get their money out of the market as they're tapering it shows a little bit of weakness so you're like oh yeah pull back and then they'll push it back up tomorrow and allow the uh the institutions to pull the rest of their shares because they can't they own so many shares there's you're talking about you know trillions probably in at least billions of dollars in wall street hedge funds and all of that so they can't just yank all of it at once. That would crash the market. They have to sell out very slowly, the same way they have to buy in very slowly for all them shares. And that's just what this looks like to me. Like they're coming out, and then the Fed's like, oh, push it back up. Oh, they're coming out again. Now push it back up. So at some point, we're going to be where the Feds can't push it up anymore and because the institutions are going to be out. And it's just going to be 401ks and retail traders left in the market and maybe like a few crazy institutions who are shortened. They're going to leave us all bag holding and drop the bag on us. That's the plan. question I have is how many pumps left do they have? And Jerome Powell's pretty old, so I'd say he don't got a lot of pumps left. <laughs> so... That's it for tonight's episode of The Last Trip. We'll end it there. We'll be back tomorrow morning for some live stream trading on both channels. If you haven't checked out H&H Traders channel, go check it out. Link in the description. And also go check out FrameworkFortune.com. Appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.